All right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Merit Guest. How are you doing, Merit? I'm doing great, John. Thanks. Yes, and Merit has been a business owner for over 20 years, uh, and she has worked with companies large and small as a consultant, as a coach, to to help improve their, their sales, revenue generation, their overall performance. Uh, you were previously the, the head of a sales training organization, yes, and now you go out and train people yourself. And you have a thing called the and I'm going to try and get this right first time, the merit method for sales mastery. That's right. (laughs) So, uh, so Merit, what is the merit method for sales mastery? Uh, Well, first of all, I have to tell you, it's, uh, I didn't name it that because I've got this giant ego. Um, (laughs) Merit means worthy of praise, worthy to earn. And that really is um, the perfect label for the methodology because it's really about being the type of sales professional that is uh, deserving of the rewards of working with clients and and customers in appropriate ways. So it's really um, being worthy to serve others and being worthy to earn more ourselves. Mm -hmm. And really the the methodology is, uh, it's really a, a combination of things that I've been doing for the past 20 years. And it's, you know, when I ask groups, um, what are what are the most important things to being successful in sales? And they'll always say like sales skills and sales action plans. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, we've got that mm-hmm. in, in the model. Um, what they never say is, you know, it's it's important about the the sales mindset. So most of the the, the first half of my career, I really you know, when all you have is a hammer, everything is a nail. Sure. Um, so I taught sales skills and getting your game plans together. Um, once I really understood what a, a sales mindset really looked like and how to help somebody develop that, strengthen that, it shifted everything that I was doing. And now the model is really about mindset, mechanics, and motion. And so when you really look at those three pieces of the puzzle, it really, um, it it completely alters a sales professional's ability to be effective because they're not working against themselves. Um, Their their mindset support them so that they can be in powerful action and use the uh, skills and the, the mechanics of selling that they've learned in any course. Yeah, I live, just come back for a moment. I really like what you mentioned at the beginning there, this idea of worthy, because I'm not sure that a lot of people always, and especially in a sales situation, where they where they actually feel worthy of, as you say, earning the business, because... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an industry where people, you know, sales is a profession where people are always kind of looked down on. They feel bad about themselves. They have a bad, they have a terrible reputation, even though they're the people out there who are introducing people to solutions to their, to their issues, and they have a fantastic role. I think that that worthiness is. I, I like the way you honed in on that because I think that worthiness is something that's often um, lacking because of all these outside influences. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it really, you know, the, when, when I really looked at, um, no, first little aside, I actually mm-hmm. once dated a guy whose last name was worthy. So <laughs> yeah, that, you know, if that's not the universe telling you, you're probably in the right role. I don't know what is like, can you imagine I would have introduced myself as I'm merit worthy. I mean, it's yeah, great. I, <laughs> so, I, I should have married him on a, for a lot of reasons, but oh, well, anyway. Um, but yeah, it really does make a difference. You know, I could teach you all the best things to say and, and things to do to be in action. And none of that would make any difference because if fundamentally you're, you have an internal belief that you're only worth X amount of dollars, then no matter what you learn to do in a selling skills class, you're, you're going to self-correct because ultimately if we think we're worth, I'll make up numbers, a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, you know, if you get much above that, you're going to say, mm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. And you're <laughs> going to self-correct down. And which means you're either not going to use the skills that you've learned. You're not going to do them powerfully. You're not going to be in powerful action at the level that you really could or should. And it just, we, we defeat ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so really this idea of 
being worthy is and worthy to earn starts with mindset. It starts with the internal mind, which is all the things that we say to ourselves. And then the second piece is our behavioral mind, which is what our actions say to other people. Right. And then the third piece of the puzzle, which I really think is the, the secret sauce, the key to the kingdom, um, it's the emotional mind. It's how well we understand our own emotions and the impact we have on other people. Because if sales is a relationship business, and we've heard for you know decades now that we should be understanding people and understanding the dynamics of a relationship, the number one relationship we have, the one that follows us everywhere, is the relationship we have with ourselves. Mm. So when we really don't understand what triggers us, what gets us in that mood, what keeps us energized, what, what takes away our energy, we're really working against our own self. So, mm. you know, my belief is if you want to get good in sales, yes, understand other people, understand relationships, but start with the the one relationship that is most important above all other others, which is our own relationship with our own mindset and our beliefs. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, I 150% agree. I, I love that. I do think that, uh, as you say, I think you can get the skills, uh, you can do all of these other things, but if you don't understand yourself, uh, then it can all fall apart because you're correct about triggers and people don't always realize their triggers. And I do, I, I advise people all the time to, to try and figure out what is it that triggers you. I mean, for instance, as you know, in sales, uh, you could go into a situation, you could be feeling great about everything and then maybe somebody looks at you slightly what you think is the wrong way and that triggers you because it reminds you of something else and maybe a situation before you know it it's all spiraling out of control and it may mean absolutely nothing but if you were confident enough in yourself and you understood your triggers then you know how to deal with them when they come up exactly and it, and it really makes a difference in how i coach and train my clients and mm -hmm. what i've noticed is you know in in the beginning when all i really understood was here's a good skill set. Here's how to teach people good questioning techniques. Yeah. And then I would teach everybody the same exact way. But what I, what I learned when I studied more about the emotional mind is that if you, if you um, have high self-regard and low impulse control, that means you, you know, like you're confident, you know, you know the right answer. And someone's going to ask you a question and you're just going to blurt out the answer. Mm -hmm. Even if I've trained you that it's, that people aren't recognizing how smart you are because you answer their question. They really identify how smart you are and that they're drawn to work with you because you've asked them a question that makes them think deeper about their mm -hmm. issue than they really thought about before. And that's what people are drawn to. It's like, you, you made me really, you challenged me. I hadn't thought about it like that. I need what you're offering even more than I originally thought. And that's when you go from not just pushing and, and selling and convincing your stuff, people that, that your stuff is great, but really enrolling people in what's possible for them when, when they opt in, when they discover mm -hmm. for themselves that the solution that you're offering is really aligned with the need that they have. And, and it just made me, it made me teach people differently. So I would teach you the questioning skills Right. different if you have impulse control than if you didn't and that's just one example yeah no it's a great example and and as we know you know people trust conclusions they come to them come to by themselves over anything you can ever tell them so your right. job is through that questioning is to help it has helped the other person come to conclusions. And as you say, then they will reward you for guiding them or sparking that thought, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. So, so tell me, how do you help people with, um, with the really getting to understand their emotional side? Because I mean, a lot of people have come up in sales and it's kind of a hard nosed business and all of that. And it's, you know, crush your target and move forward and everything is like full momentum and full on all the time. How do you, cause it almost feels like you have to tell people take a step back and say, you know, you need to get yourself, know yourself on an emotional level. Um, to some people that might sound a little touchy feely, but in your, in, in what you're actually explaining is this is how you can really impact how you interact and the kind of success you have. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, um, what, what people want when, when they know that I, you know, have expertise in sales and I work with people in different ways, but what they ask me for is sales skills and strategy. And my, my percept, my, um, my coaching to them is always, you know, I'm going to give you what you need or, or sorry, I'm going to give you what you want. Um, but I'm also going to give you what you need, right? I'm going to, I'm going to honor what you want, but I'm going to give you what you need. And so that mindset piece, I, I use a few different, um, assessment tools to help people really see the distinctions in their internal mind, their behavioral mind, and their emotional mind. So um, with emotional mind, I do use an emotional intelligence assessment. I, I use one um, that has the most scientifically backed um, mm -hmm. you know, research, and, and I feel very good about that one because it really, you know, it's, it's, it's got the data behind it, right? It's got the mm -hmm. research. Um, behavioral mind, uh, you know, many people at this, at some stage of the game have done sort of a, a disc profile or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so I use something um, that's very similar to that to really just have them understand just the basics. I don't, I don't think you need to go so much and it's not really that hard to figure out if you're a, a bottom line person or if you're a more talkative person or if you're a numbers person or a people person, like these are not you know, difficult things to figure out. You probably know yourself pretty well at this point. You have a good handle on that. Um, what I look at is, okay, knowing that about yourself, how, how does that impact your selling situation? How does that impact your ability? How do you need to adjust the skills and, and action plans that you've learned so that you can be effective with the people who don't match exactly your behavioral style? And I think that's the piece that gets that's missing in a lot of that, um, personality behavioral style training. Like it, I don't, I don't believe you look at things in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. I look at them in connection with how does this impact you when you're on in a selling environment? Yeah. Um, and then the other piece that internal mind that is, that's very deep personal work. And I've, I've spent a long time to get those questions right to really hone people in on, how do they distinguish for themselves what those beliefs are? I'm not interested in where they came from. Sure. Your mother was poor and your father grew up in the depression. I don't, that's, that's, I'm not a therapist, right? It's like, <laughs> it's great that, you know, however they got there, they're there. Yeah. But which beliefs do you identify with? And the ones that are relevant to selling. So um, money, beliefs mm -hmm. about money, beliefs about authority figures and decision makers, beliefs about our own self-worth. That's what I want to, you know, beliefs about sales as a profession, as an industry, yeah. you know, none of us are tucking our little babies in and saying, God, I hope you're a salesperson. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, that's not happening. So <laughs> I, I really, um, from a variety of sources and, and my own transformational work, personal and professional over mm -hmm. the years, designed some deliberate questions that have people really go from the general to the specific so they can get clear about those beliefs, choose the ones that support them yeah. and redecide. That's sort of my term, redecide what I call hand me down beliefs that don't serve you anymore. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, we, let's say we, we somehow got handed down the belief that, you know, money is the root of all evil. Oh right. my God, that's going to kill you in sales. If you believe money sure. is the root of all <laughs> evil, you're not going to make any, exactly. like you're not going to make enough. Like no half, no no question about it. So just how if that one was handed to you, just how you would choose you you get to look at it and go, huh. If I could start from a blank sheet of paper and write down all the beliefs that I would want that would be supportive in my role of salesperson, mm -hmm. entrepreneur, business owner, manager, leader, whatever it is, um, is this one that I would willingly choose and write down if I could write down any belief. And if it's not, then I encourage people to re-decide, to choose to put that one on the shelf and to, to rewrite it so that it really does serve them. And it, it sounds so basic when I say it out yeah, loud, but it's, but it's very but it's powerful. A, yeah. But it's a fascinating thing to do because I mean, think about it that, you know, in general, we don't spend enough time, examining our own beliefs figuring it and and 
and figuring also that we change over time, right? And some of these, some of these beliefs or whatever they are that you've carried with you, maybe they served you once upon a time, maybe they didn't, um, but you're in a different phase of your life and you've got different goals, different, I mean, if you're in sales, you're in a different world now and you're trying to, um, you're trying to sell a product, you're trying to service, you're trying to earn money, revenue for the company, money for yourself, create value for your customers yeah you're you're correct it's uh it's probably something that a lot of people you know watching will certainly stop and think about when was the last time i really did an inventory of my beliefs right um there was a there's a woman it reminds me of a, a woman that um was in one of my keynote audiences this a number of years ago and um she came up to me at, well actually she called me a couple weeks later after this event and she said I don't know what you specifically said in the session, but after your, your keynote, I went out and I had a conversation with a prospect that I had a proposal out to. And two weeks later, I was able to close a deal that was $75,000 more than the original proposal I was going to go in with. So at first she tells me this and I got a little nervous. Like, I hope I didn't say something like, just charge people a bunch yeah, more. It yeah. doesn't sound like something I would have said. <laughs> yeah. um, she said, "No, no, no. Uh, I, I, what I what I said was what I believe that I said in that session was um, that how we buy impacts how we sell. Right? There's mm -hmm. a direct relationship. Again, that's all about internal mind. That's mm -hmm. mindset. It has nothing to do with um, skills or action plans. That is 100% mindset. And she realized in that workshop that um, she, what she thought was a lot of money, what she was projecting that onto her prospects. Uh. And, and she, didn't, she didn't charge them more for what she had put together. What she noticed that she did was she was taking services that would have been va very valuable to that, to that client. She was taking them out of their proposal, making the them thing. optional because it, it needed to get down to a number that she was comfortable talking about. So after I said that she was able to put those services in, it was exactly the right thing that the client needed. They said yes, because of those services. Yeah, it was more than they thought they were going to spend sure. it was exactly what they needed. And they were a long-term client for her for a very long time, you know, for a long time, I guess that is yeah. redundant. Um, but but there you go. That's a that's a that's a fantastic uh, uh, fantastic point here because there's a real economic value to some self reflection and to understand it, understanding your own beliefs. Because as you said, if that's how if that's how you perceive things, uh, then you are going to project it. So there's no point in going out trying to make a million dollar sale if you're in the back of your head saying, "I would never spend a million dollars on anything." <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Is exactly. It, um, Mara, we're bumping up against the end of our time here, but before we go, I'd love you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you. Absolutely. Um, so I like to say I'm serious sales, seriously fun. So there's two parts of me. Sometimes I do stand up comedy. That's the serious fun part of me. Um, so you have to Google me if you're in the Denver area. You might see me at a comedy club sometimes. Excellent. Soon. Um, but the serious sales part of me, I, I, I speak at conferences, I'll do opening keynotes and energize people. It's a lot about the mindset piece. And then I do some very roll up your sleeves, let's get some work done, uh, breakout sessions and corporate events and, um, uh, you know, co company retreats, sales training uh, things. So I'll, I'll go to the company. And then I also run um, two-day sales intensives. It's two full days of mechanics and motion and all that good stuff. And then we also do, prior to those sessions, the deep personal uh, mindset work. And that's more one-on-one -on -one and assessments and online and all that good stuff. So um, the way to find that out, uh, currently this the site is under construction, the new site, but you can find me at meritguest.com, M-E-R-I-T-G-E-S-T, -E so guest without the U. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's sort of speaker information. And then if you go to um, http three part dot merit method dot com a little little choppy for <laughs> right now um, that uh, gets you some information about those two day intensives and the the three part curriculum 
Fantastic. Well, listen, Mary, this has been a lot of fun. Hopefully you come back again soon and, and talk more. I know there's a lot more we can go into. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks.